Hello everybody and welcome to video four in this Pygame tutorial series. In this video, I'm going to be adding the finishing touches to this game, making it a fully functioning game. We have now implemented all of the physics and the logic to allow the players to move, but we need something that tells us if we won, if we lost, what level we're on, all of that kind of stuff. So that is what we will do now. Before I go any further though, if you have made it this far, give yourself a pat on the back and go leave a comment. Let me know what you've thought of the series so far. Any feedback, positive or negative, is more than appreciated. All right, let's continue and let's get into this. So we need to know levels. That is kind of the first thing we need here. The reason we need levels is because the computer is going to start off very slow and then it's going to get faster and faster and it's going to determine its speed by the level. So what I'm going to do is make a class here. We're going to call this class game info. Now, this is going to be responsible for exactly what it says, the information about the game. You're going to see why it's beneficial to do it in this way. But rather than creating like 20 variables to keep track of all of the stuff that we want, we'll just do it in this class and then it makes our code very, very readable. So I'm just going to say levels is equal to 10. So it'll be a constant. We're going to have 10 levels in this game. If you wanted more, well, then you can increment this. Then I'm going to say define a knit underscore underscore. And I'm going to say self and then level is equal to one. This is just indicating that we're starting at level one. OK, then we're going to say self dot level is equal to level. We're going to say self dot started is equal to false, indicating whether or not the current level has started. And we're going to say self dot level underscore start underscore time is equal to none. The reason that we're doing this is actually we'll do it at zero. Sorry, uh, is because we want to know how much time has elapsed in the current level. That's something that we're going to do in here. OK, so now we're going to say define and we're going to implement some uh, methods. We're going to say define next level. Now, what this is going to do is say self dot level and then plus equals one. And then it's going to say self dot started is equal to false, because if we're going to the next level, then we don't want to start the next level yet. We need to wait for the user to do that. Then we're going to say define and this is going to be reset. Now inside of reset, we're just going to reset everything. So we're going to say self dot level is equal to one. We're going to say self dot started is equal to false. And then self dot level start time is equal to zero as well. I think that's all we need to do. Then we're going to say define game underscore finished. We have to spell finished correctly. This will take in self and this will simply return self dot level is greater than self dot levels. So if the current level is greater than however many levels we have, then we have finished the game and then we'll say define. And this is going to be start underscore level. Now, all this is going to do is it's going to say self dot started equals true. And it's going to say self dot level start time is equal to time dot time. So that's why we imported time previously here. I'll go back to this so that you can read it. But the idea is we want to keep track of when the level started and then we can easily determine how much time has elapsed by checking the current time and subtracting it from this. OK, and then lastly, we're going to say define get underscore level underscore time self. And here we're just going to say if not self dot started then return zero. So if you haven't started the level, then no time has elapsed. Otherwise, we will return self dot level start time minus time dot time. OK, I went through that relatively quickly, but that is the game info class. You can almost see all of it right there. Pretty straightforward, pretty simple, but it's just going to make our life easier as we go through this. OK, so now that we have that, what I want to do is kind of make something pop up on the screen when we first start the game that says like press any key to begin level, right? So every time a new level happens, I want to say like press any key on the keyboard to start the level. That's all I want to do. So the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to go right after my draw here. I'm actually going to put another while loop. Now, this while loop is going to wait until the level starts. And once the level starts, it will get out of it and then allow all of this stuff to happen. So you won't be able to move the car. The computer won't move until we start the level. So let me just go down here. So I have a reference on my other screen and this is what we're going to do. Wow, not. And then this is going to be game underscore info 
dot started. Now we need to define game info. So I'm going to say game underscore info is equal to game info like that. And while not game info dot started, so we have not started the current level, we are going to blitz some text on to the screen. So I'm going to say win. Actually, I'm going to do something else, which I'm going to describe now. So what I want to do is write a function that is capable of writing any text onto the screen directly in the center of the screen. It's a very useful function to have. So to do this, we first need to define what's known as a font. So if you want to write text onto the screen in Pygame, you need a font. So what you're going to do is at the top of your program, you need to make sure you do this at the very top. You can say pygame.font.init, you know, obviously after you import Pygame. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually define a font object. This font object is what you can then use to render text with that font. So I'm going to say main underscore font is equal to pygame.font.sys font, not system font, just sys font. And then inside of here, there's a bunch of options, but you guys know that I always go with comic sans. And then you can put the size. And for now, I'm going to go with 44. Now, this is the text size. Change this, obviously, to whatever you want. 44 is a good size, though, for like some title text, which is what we're going to have. OK, so now we have our font. This will only work if you initialize the font. So if you're having an issue, just make sure you init the font first. And now that we have the font, we can use that to render some text. So I'm going to go in utils.py. I'm going to make a new function. I'm going to say define. And then this is going to be blit underscore text underscore center. And this is going to take in a window. It's going to take in a font and it's going to take in some text. All right. So inside of here, I'm going to say render is equal to font dot render. And then we're going to put the text that we want to render the anti aliasing, which is one. And then we're going to put the color, which is going to be white. So 255, 255, 255. And in fact, uh, let's make it Let's go with like 200, 200, 200, just so it's gray because we have white on the screen already. Actually, is this going to give me white? I'm not sure what this color is going to be. You know what? We'll experiment with 200, 200, 200, and we'll see what that gives us. In case you're curious, uh, you just put text you want to render. You put anti-aliasing. Just always put one for this. I won't really explain it. Just you always want one here. And then you're going to put the color. And then you can actually blit this text onto the screen just like an image. Say so win.blit, render. And then we need to put the position we want to render this at the top left hand corner, by the way, that's where you're putting here. So what I want to do is I want to render this at the win dot get underscore width. Uh, why did it fill all of that in? OK, that's fine. Divided by two. And then this is going to be subtracted by and this is going to be the render dot get underscore width over two. So what this is doing is let's go to paint and I will show you. So let's say we have our window, OK? We obviously have some width and we have some height. And then we have the text that we want to render. And I want my text to be here. Now, I need to calculate this position, not this. This would be easy enough. I just take width over two. I want this. So the way you do it is falling. This is width over two, right? W over two. So you subtract from this half of the text width. Pretty straightforward, but if you just subtract half of the text width from half of the screen width, you get the top left hand corner position of where the text should be drawn from so that it's going to fill the entire screen and be directly in the center like that. Now, you can just do the exact same thing in the height. And well, that will give you the coordinate for Y that you want this to be at. Right. So it would give you it you know, around here. OK, uh, actually, it would be probably close to around where I have it right now. Hopefully that makes sense, but that's my quick paint explanation. And let's go here. Win dot get underscore height over two minus uh, render dot get get underscore height over two. OK, so it filled that in for me. That is great. So that's going to render my text on the screen in the middle. We're going to use that a few times. That's why I wrote that. Now we want to import that. So from utils import blit uh, text center. And then we're going to go down to our where were we? our while loop inside of here and we are going to render this. So we are going to say blit text center like that. And we're going to make an F string only available in Python version 3.6 and above. By the way, I'm going to say press any key to start level. And then inside of here, I'm going to say game info dot level 
exclamation point. Okay. Now that's the text. That's actually the last thing that we're going to pass. The first thing is win. The second thing is our font, which is main font and then our text. If you're unfamiliar with F strings, the way they work is you can embed expressions directly inside of curly braces. You just put a lowercase or uppercase F before the string. So now whatever the level is, we'll say press any key to start level one, two, three, so on and so forth. Okay, now win needs to be capital. Forgot about that. And now that we have blit that text onto the screen, what I'm going to do is do an event loop. I'm going to say for event in pygame.event.get. I'm going to actually copy this. It seems inefficient to rewrite this, but it's simpler than trying to come up with a cleaner way, essentially. And I'm going to still have this kind of quit clause, except instead of run equals false, I'm just going to say pygame.quit. Okay. And then here, I'm going to say if event dot type equals equals pygame dot key down, this means you pressed any key down, then what I'm going to do is say game info dot start level. So we're going to call that start level method that will start the current level, which means this while loop will now exit and then we will go on and well, we will have the level. Now I'm wondering if I'm missing anything. I am. The one thing I'm missing is I need to manually update this display here. So pygame dot display dot update to ensure I actually show this because we're going to be skipping this draw function. Hopefully that kind of makes sense, but we're drawing everything right. And then we have this while loop and this is only going to run if we haven't started the current level. So if we haven't started the current level, we put this text over top of everything in the middle of the screen. And then as soon as they press the key down, we're going to exit out of this while loop and then start the game and the current level will start. And then if I go here, let's just make sure start level looks good inside of this class. OK, all good. So let's run the code and see what we get. OK, notice says press any key to start level one. Maybe we want to move it up a tiny bit because it's kind of hard to read when it's over top of the white. But for me, that's fine. Press any key and then notice the car starts going and we can start moving. All right, there you go. So that is how we start the current level. So we will continue in one second. We need to quickly thank the sponsor of this video and this series, which is Algo Expert. Algo Expert is the best platform to use when preparing for your software engineering coding interviews. They have over 160 coding interview practice questions, mock interviews, a data structures crash course, all kinds of other great features. Of course, I am an instructor on the platform, so you know there's going to be some quality content. And well, with that said, you can check them out from the link in the description and use the code tech with Tim for a discount on the platform. Now that we have that, I just want some text in the bottom left hand corner displaying the current level displaying your current velocity and displaying the amount of time elapsed in the level, which is actually pretty easy to do. So inside of the draw function, now what I'm going to do is also take in my game info. So now I'm going to go inside of draw and I'm going to start rendering some text and drawing some stats onto the screen. So let me go to my code here just so that this will be a bit faster for me to code out. And I'm going to start by saying that my level text, let's go like this level underscore text is equal to and then this is going to be main font dot render and I want this to say level and then game info dot level like that and then I want the anti aliasing one and the color of white 255 255 255 okay now I'm going to render my level text so I'm going to say not render so I'm going to display it on the screen window blit level text and then where do I want this? I'm just going to tell you the position, but you can feel free to uh, to mess with it all you want. I'm going to say 10 and then I'm going to say height minus and this is going to be a level text dot get underscore height minus 70. This is because we're going to put two other things below this. Now, the reason I'm doing this is so that it's dynamic. So if I ever decide to change the height of my screen, then I don't need to change this right here because it's based on the height of the screen, which is height and the height of whatever this text is here. So again, if I change the height or sorry, the size of the text, I won't need to modify anything. This will just automatically adjust itself and put it in, put itself in the bottom left hand corner. OK, so I'm just going to copy this now because we're going to do the same thing for velocity and time. So I'm going to say time text, time text, and this will be time text like that. The minus here is going to be 40 because we're going to have 30 pixels offset. That is something that we manually would have to update, but that's fine. And then here I'm going to say time colon, and it's going to be equal to game info dot 
get level time like that. OK, that looks good to me. Now let's copy this and we're going to do the same now with our player velocity just so we can see how quick it's going. I just figured that would be a cool stat to add. So now we're going to say vel and then this actually let's add a second here too. Let's add an S just so it says seconds. Uh, but for velocity, I'm going to go with. Uh, this is going to be player car dot velocity and then we'll go with PX per second standing for pixels per second, just so we have some unit there. We'll go with white again. Now, instead of time text, this is going to be called vel text. So we'll just change these all to be vel. So this is going to be vel. And then rather than minus 40, we're going to go minus 10. So 70, 40, 10. The pattern is 30 less every time. All right, there we go. That's it for drawing that text on the screen. Now let's run the code and let's see what we get. Uh, draw takes four positional arguments, but five were given. Good call. I forgot to import my game info or to add this as a parameter. So do that. And now we should be good. Remember, I passed game info into the draw function here. OK, let's run the code. And notice that now we get level one time zero seconds, velocity zero pixels. And when I start this now, notice we have our time. Now that's kind of ugly and it's negative, which means I messed something up. So we're going to have to fix that in a second. But then you can see the velocity gets updated here as well. Great. So that's fine. But what I want to do is I want to round, first of all, the velocity. So let's do that. Let's go to my velocity and let's just round this to one significant digit. So round and then comma one. And then let's go to our game info class here and let's see where I messed up. So I did self dot level start time minus time dot time. The reason this is incorrect is because time dot time is going to be after the start time. So I need to flip this around and say time dot time minus that. And then I will as well round this. But I'm just going to round this uh, to zero places. So just do a whole number because this is going to give me the displacement in seconds or the difference in seconds. OK, so let's run this now and let's see what we get. And now notice that the velocity is all good. And so is the time. Perfect. There you go. OK, so that's all we need for those stats. OK, so now that we have that, we have the velocity, we have the time, we have the level showing up. What I need to do is make it so that my computer gets faster every time I beat a level. So what we need to do is go inside of our computer car here and we need to write a method that is going to allow it to update its speed based on the current level. So I'm just going to say define next underscore level. And what we will do is say self. Now, when we go to the next level, what we need to do is reset this car. Now, we could manually call reset outside, but the first thing we'll do is say self dot reset like that so that this is going to go to its start position. Its velocity is going to get updated, all of that. However, after we reset the car, we then need to change its velocity based on the level. So I'm just going to say level inside of here. So we're going to reset the car and we're going to say self dot bell is equal to and then we'll go with whatever the self dot max bell is that was passed plus and then this is going to be level minus one multiplied by 0 0.2. Now 0 0.2 is how much I want to increase the speed of this car every level. We could put this in a variable. Uh, I'm just going to hard code it in for right now. You also could change this and make it something like 0 0.5. The one thing to keep in mind is you do not want this car to ever be faster than the player car. If it's faster than the player car, there's no way the player will win. It's just impossible because this car will take, assuming you did a good path, the best possible like line around the track. And so there's no way the uh, human's going to be able to beat it, especially because it doesn't have to worry about acceleration. It just starts at the maximum speed. So you need to make sure that whatever your increment is here is that that multiplied by the number of levels that you have plus the maximum velocity you start with is not greater than the player's speed. You could make it the same, but even if you make it the same, then the player still can't win. So this is fine. I'm saying level minus one, which means on the very last level, I will have nine multiplied by 0 0.2, so 1.8. So the speed will be 3.8, so it'll be 0 0.2 slower than the player. Hopefully that is good. Let me just make sure that that all makes sense. Uh, yes. And then the last thing we need to do is say self dot current point is equal to zero, although that should really go inside of the reset method. So where is reset? 
Ah, reset was in the abstract class. OK, so we can leave self.current point here. All right, that should be good. Uh, now we just need to see where we should call next level. So what I'm going to do now is go to my handle collision. Handle collision now needs to take game info as well. And so when we call handle collision, we need to pass game info. And now we're going to start kind of working on what happens when the computer wins or when the player wins. So if the computer finishes, we are going to reset the player cart, reset the computer cart. That looks fine. OK, and now we go here to when the player finishes. Well, if the player finishes, then rather than computer car dot reset, we're just going to say computer car dot next level and we're going to pass game info dot level. But first, we're going to say game info dot and then next level like that. So we're going to increment the next level for game info. If the player has won, we're going to reset the player car and then this will reset the computer car and change its speed for the next level. So that should be good. Now, by doing this, it means that this will automatically trigger for the next level because the game will now not have been started. We'll be waiting for the next level to be started. OK, that's fine. The only thing we need to handle now is if the computer wins. So if the computer wins, we need to put some message on the screen saying, hey, you know, you lost whatever. And then we need to reset the game. So we'll actually go game info dot reset. And before we do that, Let's just put some text on the screen. So let's say blit text center. And then this is going to be what do we want to say here? You lost exclamation point. <laughs> and we'll do this on the window and we'll pass the main font. OK, then we need to manually. This is going to be capital win like that. We need to manually delay the game. The reason we need to delay is so that we have time to see this text, because what's going to happen is we're going to show you lost. We're going to delay for however many seconds you want. I'm going to go with five seconds. And then as soon as that delay is done, it's going to automatically restart the game for us. So I'm going to say pi game dot time and then dot wait. And you put milliseconds in here. So 5000 milliseconds is five seconds. So we're going to do that. OK, that should be good. Uh, the only other thing we need to handle is what happens if the player wins the game. But we're going to do that here. So after we move the player and after we move the computer and after we handle the collision, then we're going to say if the game info dot game finished, we want to do a very similar thing to what we just did here. We want to reset all of this stuff. So we'll do that. And we want to blit text. You won the game. Like that. OK, so that's actually all we need. Now I'm going to get rid of this print statement, and I believe that we have just finished the game. Now, obviously, I'm not that confident because we have not tested it right now, but scrolling through everything looks good. And I think we've just handled everything that we needed to. And I'm also realizing how much code we have here. So again, a massive props to you guys if you stuck around, because this is a lot of code to digest over video. All right, let's run the file and let's see if we can win a level here. OK, let's press any key to start. And never mind, I remember that the guy, my computer, did I start him at a speed of two or did I start him at a higher speed? Let's see what speed he's at. Uh, yeah, it's at four. OK, so I need to put my computer car speed to two. Otherwise, I'm going to have no chance here. OK, so let's run the code and let's see. That's better. OK, so now let's try to get a win here and we'll see if the levels are working. OK, look at this driving skill. Nice, nice. All right, almost there. Let's see if we can finish before the computer. I'm hoping so. And there we go. OK, so level two. And it says press any key to start level two. OK, so let's do level two. Let's just make sure it goes to level three. And then I will kind of fast forward as I get to the final level. And we'll make sure that this actually works if the computer wins and if I win. OK, but we'll, let's just get through level two first, though, to ensure that we're going to get on to the next level. OK, almost there. I forget what the time was on the last one. I should have kept track of that. Then I could have seen if we were going faster this time. OK, 
Oops. Okay. It looks like there's an invisible wall there. That's, <laughs> I guess that's going to happen. And let's try to get up here. And okay, press any key to start. Level three. We're on level three. So now what I'm going to do is let the computer win. I'll fast forward through that. Assuming that works, then we'll see and make sure that the game actually ends when we hit level 10. All right. So here we go. Home stretch of the computer. You can see I haven't really moved until now. Let's see what happens when the computer wins and nothing. Okay. So that's actually a good thing to run into because, oh, it says press any key to start level one. So I guess it lagged for a second. Uh, okay. Let's see what the problem was here. I'm guessing the problem has to, okay, this makes sense. So what happened was we delayed for 5,000 seconds or 5,000 milliseconds, so five seconds, but we forgot to update the display to actually show this message. So I have to say pygame.display.update and now this will work. I'm not going to test it. I know that this will work now and everything will be good because it did actually reset back to level one. So with that, I believe everything should be working. Uh, I'm not actually going to go through and test the fact that the player wins works properly. I have faith that I've coded this correctly, especially because I have the finished code on my other side and these two pieces of code are identical. Although if for some reason it doesn't work, please do let me know. I'm sure the error is uh, very easy to fix if there is one, although I, I doubt there is. All right. So with that said, I'm going to end the video here. I just quickly want to thank everyone who got through all of this. I hope that you learned something from this. I hope my explanations were decent enough for some of this complex code. It is difficult to do a video where, you know, you have about 300 lines of code. That's kind of what we ended up having here, right? Tons of code, lots of code in different files as well. All kinds of classes, all kinds of functions. We used a lot of different Python features. So again, hopefully you learned a lot and you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure you leave a like, subscribe to the channel. Let me know you want to see for future content. And I hope to see you in the next YouTube video.